Welcome to the lecture Housing in the Global South. My name is Derinke Zischke and I am an assistant professor at the Department of Management in the Built Environment at the Faculty of Architecture in the Built Environment at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. What are key housing challenges affecting countries in the Global South today? What are the main elements that housing policies need to take into account to tackle these problems? And who are the main institutions and actors addressing these challenges? In this lecture, I will provide you with some basic background elements to understand the main issues that countries in the Global South are facing with regards to the provision and management of social and affordable housing today. Let's start by looking at the big picture. According to the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, 90% of urban growth in 2030 will take place in Africa, Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean. A major urban problem in the Global South for many decades has been the widespread presence of slums and informal housing in bad conditions. This means poor physical quality of the dwellings and the surrounding areas, lack of basic sanitary services and ultimately unhealthy and unsafe living conditions for a huge number of people. Therefore, housing and urban policies and programs have heavily focused on slums upgrading and urban poverty reduction. The good news is that the percentage of urban population living in slums in the Global South has decreased from 46% in 1990 to 30% in 2014. However, if we take into account the trend towards the increase in the urban population across the Global South, we see that in absolute terms, the number of people living in slums has grown almost 25% over the same period. What does this tell us? Well, slums and poor housing is still a major problem in many developed countries. In addition, we see that as a number of countries in the Global South achieve higher levels of economic growth, the proportion of middle-income households grows considerably. In terms of housing, this translates into better conditions. However, at the same time, the situation has led to the emergence of new housing challenges. These new challenges include, for example, the maintenance and management of older housing stock. The quality of the areas where informal housing has been upgraded still needs to be improved. Often, new housing projects have been built without the necessary infrastructure, facilities and transport connections. Ensuring that social and spatial integration of low-income housing areas into the wider fabric avoiding the formation of ghettos and the stigmatization of these areas. Another relatively new challenge in the Global South is housing affordability. Housing affordability, in simple terms, refers to housing that allows certain groups of the population, usually lower or lower middle income households, to access adequate housing without experiencing excessive financial hardship. A report by the McKinsey Global Institute in 2014 refers to the global housing affordability gap as the difference between the cost of a city's acceptable standard housing and what households can afford. The report estimated that this gap stands currently at $650 billion. 330 million people currently live in substandard housing or are financially stretched by housing costs. To tackle these problems, a comprehensive approach to housing policies is needed. This means that, in order to attain adequate housing, policies should integrate at least five key aspects. The physical quality of the dwelling. The quality of the environment where the dwellings are located the location and accessibility, security of tenure and affordability. 
An important element of housing policies is housing tenure. Housing tenure refers to the financial arrangement under which someone has the right to live in a dwelling. The most common housing tenures across countries are home ownership, private rental housing, social rental housing, which in some countries is called public housing or subsidized housing, and cooperative housing. There is much debate in policy and academia on the relative merits of each type of tenure. Advocates of homeownership argue, for example, that it is a way to help poor households to build an asset base. Others, however, are critical of too much emphasis on homeownership at the expense of rental housing, which would facilitate geographical and employment mobility, and so on. What are the main housing tenures in your country? Is there a good balance between these tenures? Housing policies require the participation of different actors and institutions. We can identify four types of actors or institutions that play important roles in the production and management of housing in most countries. This triangle diagram shows at the top the state or government actors. On your right, the market or commercial actors. On your left, community actors. Community actors include cooperatives and other self-organized groups of households that work together to provide house for and by themselves. Lastly, if you look at the center of the triangle, you will find a fourth type of actor. This we call third sector. These are organizations such as the social enterprises, which operate like businesses, but are not for profit. In other words, they have a social mission, but need to be financially viable to continue to exist. So, what are the key actors and institutions providing and managing housing in your country? How well do these actors and institutions fulfill their role? How could this change in order to have better housing? In the next videos, you will see examples from three very different regions in the Global South namely Chile, Ghana and China, where innovative policies and practices are being tried to tackle more effectively both long-standing and new housing challenges.